Good day. Welcome to Endurance Room. Hope you guys are doing good. I got an interesting question the other day in the comments on the how to stay warm in the woods video. My buddy Mick was having a bit of a discussion with his son about the pros and cons of old school canvas and wool versus modern military synthetic type gear for long-term wilderness survival. It was an interesting question. I have some thoughts on it. I thought we could talk about the pros and cons of each and maybe open up a bit of a dialogue. So let's take a look at the modern gear first. For a shelter option, Mick's son chose a British Basha and then for his sleep equipment, he was looking at something modern with a bivy and a sleeping bag, like something like the MMS sleep system. Starting with the shelter first, the British Basha, it's very similar dimensions to this Ratnik shelter that I'm in right now. And well, I love this. I think it's totally fantastic. The footprint is a little small. Right now, I'm, I'm closed up on three sides with an open front to get in and out of the wind. It's really windy today. But there's not, there's not a ton of room, especially for a long-term shelter. The British Basha is of similar dimensions. Now, although I don't have any first-hand experience with the British Basha, I haven't heard anything bad about them. And I think if you were on foot, say you're doing a through hike or, you know, a couple days out in the woods, I think that would be a fantastic option as a lightweight, versatile piece of kit. The camouflage on them is great. It's military grade gear, so it's gonna be very durable. But for a long-term piece of gear, it's just not gonna afford you a lot of room. As for a sleep system suggestion, with a modern bivy and a sleeping bag, I think this is a really good choice. I think it would be durable, I think it would last. He's also favoring this option because it would allow him to sleep outside without requiring a fire which is a very important consideration to take in because a fire is probably the number one way to give away your position, especially at night. And it also takes a lot of calories cutting and processing, collecting wood. And if you're in a long-term survival situation, after your basic needs are met, calories are gonna be your main concern. So anything you can do to reduce expenditure is going to be key. Now let's talk about the old school wool and canvas. It's extremely durable. I've got pieces of old school military surplus gear that is at least 70 years old and still going strong. It's warm, it's reliable, it's dependable. It can take a spark from your campfire and it's not gonna burn a hole in it. We just took a look at this. This is a Jervenfell Duken. It's a piece of modern Norwegian military gear. It's synthetic, just like this Ratnik shelter, and I wouldn't trust either of them to be too close to a fire, and Ember is going to destroy it. Whereas, you know, my Plosh Palakas, I've gotten coated with ashes and embers from the fire, and I've never had a problem with them failing. So, it's a really important consideration to have, especially for long term sustainability. I think ultimately, it's not going to come down to your gear. It's not going to come down to what you take out into the woods as much as it would your mindset, what your basic skills are like, because you can do a whole lot with very, very little, with very, very basic, basic stuff. I know we've been talking a lot about gear these past couple of months with this stuff, but at the end of the day, your basic skills, that's what's really going to see you through. That's what you're going to be depending on and just your mental state, you know, what your frame of mind is like, do you want it? So, I think it's a really interesting question. I, I thank you, Mick, for putting it forward on the channel. It's something that I've been kicking around in the back of my head for a while that I've been wanting to talk about. You know, I think we could all agree that these are very, very interesting times. So wool and canvas, old school gear versus modern military gear, what's better? I think ultimately it doesn't really matter. It's it's what you what you do with it, what the location is going to be like, what the resources are going to afford, your luck. Personally, I would take into consideration natural shelters. What did the primitive people in the area that you're in 
use for their shelters, that would be worth taking a look at because whatever natural resources in your area, that would allow you to build a rather stealthy shelter that would blend into the environment. You know, last year we put out a series of videos on a primitive slash modern longhouse that we built for basically 30 bucks. Use saplings from the area and build off the frame and then covered it with this plastic drop sheet. I was gifted some landscaping fabric that we ended up using to cover it over, but at the end of the day, we didn't really need it. It would have been fine with the drop sheet and then using natural materials or natural materials completely. So things like that, that would be worth exploring and considering and you know taking a look at. But after you get your shelter set up, then what? Then it's a quest for calories. So what's that going to look like? Once again, what are the resources like in your area? What kind of game do you have available? Fishing? You know, plant life? Those are the kind of things that I would really be spending my time taking a look at. How are you going to feed yourself? What kind of tools are you going to need to take care of that? If you're trying to live undisturbed, firing a weapon probably isn't going to be the stealthiest solution. Passive food procurement would be something that I would be focusing my attention on. You know, what did people use, you know, 100 years ago, 200 years ago for, for trapping? Primitive trapping could be a highly effective solution if you got a few basic skills, know how to build a few different triggers, and know where to put them. So between, between shelter and sleeping gear, I don't think that's going to make or break you as long as you're staying warm, you're staying comfortable. That's going to keep your spirits up. You don't want to be cold. That's going to expend calories. So you want to be warm. You got to figure out a way to have a good solid shelter, probably one that's going to be insulated. You could build a natural shelter with nice thick walls. You could build a dugout into the side of a hill, a south facing hill if you're in the northern hemisphere. That would give you three sides of cover. It would blend right into the environment. It might be a good option to take a look at. And then considering ways to feed yourself long term. Now, no matter what gear you bring, over time it, it will wear. So how are you going to maintain that? How are you going to replace it? Do you know how to tan hides? Do you know how to preserve meat? I've always been interested in wilderness survival. I read about the frontiersmen and Native Americans growing up. In elementary school, we read a series of books called My Side of the Mountain about this kid that ran off into the Catskills in upstate New York and lived out in the wilderness on his own for a couple years. It's a really cool book to read growing up and you know it really sparked a flame and got me interested in wilderness survival and it was something that always kind of stayed with me. In my 20s and early 30s, I was doing a lot of hiking and just kind of you know, dabbling with bushcraft. But then I really got into it a few years ago when I was getting ready to go out to Hawaii to do this old time strongman workshop for my buddy John. I was planning on traveling out there and spending about two weeks in Maui and I didn't have room for hotels or anything so I was gonna camp. And to get ready for that, I found Dave Canterbury's channel and then through Dave, I found Corporal's Corner and the Greybearded Green Beret. And I just started absorbing all that info. And I, I didn't stop. When I got back from Maui, I learned a really important lesson that I was carrying too much gear. So that made me really consider what I was carrying around and try to minimize my load. I started just really focusing on the 10 C's and the five C's ultimately. That's your primary kit, your main tools for survival, your cutting tool, cordage, your container, your combustion devices, and your cover elements. So like any kit you put together, that's gonna be your basic basics. You wanna have that stuff as high quality, as durable and dependable as you can get it, and know how to use it. That's Those are gonna be your main tools out in the woods, and then everything else is a bonus. So I started working on the five C's and the 10 C's and you know, the basics of survival. A few months went by and I found this show called Alone. 
you guys have probably all heard about it. It's where they take, you know, 10 people out in the woods and they each have 10 items and a little bit extra to go out and survive in the woods. And it's kind of a last man standing situation who can last the longest before, you know, tapping out. I thought it'd be an amazing experience and I started thinking about applying for the show and that was basically the beginning of, you know, my bushcraft channel. I started getting ready to apply for a loan and I did a few months later and started submitting them videos and I didn't make the cut that year, but it really it really inspired me to get out in the woods and film and I just I just kept running with it and here we are today. Thank you, Mick, for putting out that question. I think it was fantastic, and it's something that I've been thinking about ever since I was young, and I'm sure a lot of you have also. So if you guys have any feedback or any ideas on the pros and cons of old school gear versus modern gear, put them down below. We'd love to hear about it. And if you've got any other thoughts on long-term wilderness survival, love to hear about it. I hope you guys are all doing good. Happy holidays, everybody. We'll talk to you soon. Cheers.